Uh, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the UT701 temperature calibrator from UNI-T. Uh, this here is the sister unit to the UT705 that we looked at previously. I will leave a link to the video on this unit in the description box below. But this unit provides me with process measurement and source capability for voltage and milliamps. It does not, however, give me any temperature measurement capability and that's what the UT701 does for me here. Um, so UNI-T and this line of instruments have chosen to split the functionality across two instruments. They're not alone in that. Uh, other manufacturers do do that. Both Fluke, uh, Shalanu do do that as well. It is an option that you do get from some manufacturers. Um, unlike something like the MR9270S that we see here that has all the functionality I need built into the one uh, quite a bit smaller compact unit so it's up to you uh, what methodology you want to use for your instrumentation really. Now while the UT701 does give me temperature capability it only gives me source capability. I cannot measure a thermocouple or an RTD with this unit um, so I've kind of messed up a little bit there. Uh, in a maintenance background Whilst this unit would give me the ability to test the transmitter like these little fellows here that we've done in previous videos and we'll give it a go with this to see how well it performs. Um, I wouldn't be able to check the temperature on the thermocouple itself or the RTD uh, without some of the different instrumentation. So we are limited a little bit to say I've messed up with that aspect. Um, Unity do do the 714 and the 715 which again are a pair of units there, a step up from these two. They would give me a source and measurement capability. And they also do the 725, which is the fully combined unit, similar to the MR9270S. That gives me measurement and source capability as well for the thermocouples, as well as all the process calibration, voltage and milliamps built into it as well. So that could be a different option for you, should you prefer that. Obviously, cost does go up as you go through these units. These units here are priced around about £200. I picked this one up for £186 off AliExpress, um, which incidentally is about the same price as the MR9270S. If you shop around, you can get this for a couple hundred as well. So the price of these two units is under a little bit of stress, really. They've got something to prove against the MR9270S there. Um, in the kit, it does come boxed, so you see here, box that comes in and you have all the uh, thermocouples and RTDs it can deal with on the back of the box here the standard JK T E R S uh, B N N and then we've got our WR325 and the WRE526 and then we have resistance temperature devices the PT10 which I've never seen one before PT100 which is very common and the CU15 CU100 there let's say just source capability and you see the tolerances that it can operate to there as well. We'll take a closer look at them alongside the MR9270S and have a comparison. Uh, you then get uh, inside the box the actual pouch here that comes with unbranded, just a basic little pouch. Inside we have an instruction manual because of the route that I emptied to buy this through. This is in Chinese. You can, however, download an English manual from the Unity website. Uh, but you don't get a paper copy in the box. Uh, and then you get a pair of leads here. They're the standard uh, UNI-T leads, really. Uh, they're not too bad, uh, but I believe they are PVC, uh, reasonably flexible. And you get red and black crocodile clips, and these are the type that slide onto the probe tip, if we can. There we go. Um, so relatively small, but that's probably what you want for thermocouples. Uh, I think they're adequate for that. Um, fully shrouded, but uh, yeah, they are a relatively cheap and cheerful set of leads and crop clips, but they are in the case, so you get them, and you get the bags that will come in, and in the actual pouch itself, you've got a little pocket here, a little docket, that is to the side that you see there, you've got this little docket here, um, a little certificate conformity card again, all in Chinese, and then you've got loops to keep the meter sound and a set of loops for the leads themselves as well. And that is what you get in the kit. That is it. 
Uh, no thrills with this one, I'm afraid. Uh, so that's our basic unit. What I will do is set it up with my reference meters over here and we can look at some measurements on it and see how it gets along. So just before we do some measurements, I'll put this slide up here. This is comparing the capabilities of the UT701 to my little family of cheapo process calibrators there, the LB02SG-004A and MR9270S. You can see that it does give you all the thermocouple types and RTD types the same as the uh, little process calibrator units. Uh, ranges are pretty much there. Uh, the UT701 does give you better resolution uh, down to 0.1 degrees C against 1 degrees C for all the other units. However, if we look at the tolerance on paper, that's quite a significantly different tolerance that the UT701 is showing there. Now, I believe tolerances on the smaller process calibrators there are without the cold junction temperature unit included which is included in the UT701 there, so that may be accounting for some of the differences. Uh, millivolt wise, you can see it's pretty much the same kind of tolerance as our little process calibrator units. Uh, and again, uh, down at the RTDs, you get the same kind of functionality. Uh, so it's not quite as accurate as the LB02 with regards to resistance, is it? Um, but it should be better than our SG-004A uh, and even our MR9270S on paper it should be better than those and it does give me these other two RTDs that aren't included in the little process calibrator units the PT10 and the CU100 if you happen to deal with those kind of devices I don't deal with those so it's not that big an issue to me uh, but that's what its capabilities are in comparison to the little process calibrator units so we've coupled our unit up to our 2450 source meter here. We are in resistance mode. To get through your various modes, you use these three buttons up here. You can switch between voltage and ohms using this one. We have two ohms ranges and there's our millivolts and two millivolt ranges as well. And we are in our lowest ohms range here. If you wanted to, to get to RTD, you just hit the RTD button and we can punch in the temperature there. You can cycle through the RTDs using the RTD button again. There's our four RTDs, and we can go back to. Oops. And there's our lowest ohms range. Uh, we'll just set up our zero on this. So we're moving zero. Uh, we can go for 100 ohms. Now, as with some of these other units, you do require a excitation current to get the resistance function to operate. And you can see I've set it up to one milliamp on the 2450 source meter. And you can see there, we've got 100 ohms, no problems. Um, our base range goes up to 500, if I remember correctly. Yes, yeah, so that's our lowest range, so that can only go up to 500 ohms. Uh, which is it's done there. We need to hit the volts ohms again to go up to our next range. And the screen flashes when you are, or it thinks the load is open circuit. Now, unfortunately, on the highest range, we need a lower excitation current, which is three milliamps that I've just put into there. Uh, we reset that, so we'll have to reset our zero. And then now we can go up to. Uh, five kilo ohms, I believe, of this. Uh, there's our one kilo ohm there. And our two kilo ohms. And our three kilo ohms. There's our four kilo ohms. And there's our five kilo ohms. Um, so, a pretty good set of readings from the ohms function there, really. Uh, I'll switch my leads over onto our DMM7510 and we can look at some millivolts. Uh, we are, see where we are, we're reading zero millivolts there anyway. Uh, let's pull them up. Now we need to go to the millivolts. So there's our millivolts. We're getting up to 
one millivolt there, and then we can put that down, we can go up to some 50 millivolts there. This goes up to 110 millivolts in the lowest range, so I'm taking all that to 100. There's 110 there, so again, these are all within spec. We go up to our next millivolts range, Again, press the key. Now we can go up to 1.1 uh, volts is the maximum we can go up to. And in the higher range, there's our 100 millivolts again. And there's our 1.1 volts there. So all pretty good and accurate in terms of that. So fairly happy with the source capability of the unit. Uh, we do have uh, quick settings here to go between 0, 100%, 25%, up or down at a time. You can set those within the setup. Um, so you can set the range that it works in between uh, and you can then ramp either a fast ramp or a slow ramp between those settings that you set. And then you have the quick zero there. But say uh, if we go to 100, this one's only currently set up for 0 to 1 volt, so it depends it won't be full range for these instruments, it will be what you set it up to on the setup. So that's our basic measurement function. Uh, what I'll do is I'll set up one of the transmitters alongside our UT705 and we can have a look and see how it performs with that one. So we've set our little transmitter up here. This is a K-type transmitter, 0 to 1000 degrees range. So it matches the current settings up on our 701 here. Uh, we are using the 705 to measure the loop current and supply the 24 volts that is needed to power this. And we are reading 4.052 milliamps here, uh, a little bit out uh, at this bottom end. Uh, that could be this unit, it could be the UT701. I'm introducing another issue into the accuracy equation here, aren't I? So I just to be careful uh, with that. But when I do test this with my reference kit, there's only about 0.02% inaccuracy our transmitter so that's all fine and um, we can uh, step this up we are set up to K type so we can use our buttons here to do individual digits or if we hold them in we can go 25% and we are 250 there we should be 8 milliamps 25% again it's 12 milliamps so those two are fairly good and accurate um, we've got our 0% and 100% so we can go straight to 100% which is 1000 degrees C and should be 20 milliamps and we are 19.895 which again is a little bit low so interesting that we've crossed over the the zero mark there we are high down at 4 milliamp but low down at the 20 milliamp so that's that, that works there no problems really let's uh, just demo the ramp modes here since we are connected up to this uh, we have our uh, I think it goes fast mode first We'll go up and then we have a different ramp rate there. Hard to tell the difference between them. And then we have a very slow ramp rate, but this will be in 25% values. Ramp for five seconds, so 250 degrees C, which is probably the more useful one for me that I would use as long as you can read the instruments quick enough. It's giving you enough time and all of them ramp all the way up to the max value and then they'll start to go back down again once they've held at the max value for five seconds and there we go that's functionality for a transmitter working all okay we'll knock this out of the way and we'll take a look at the results table okay so these are my test results here um, in these tables the values that you see here will be slightly different to the ones you've seen in the video because I waited for everything to warm up uh, and come to temperature including the transmitter left everything powered up for an hour uh, so let everything stabilize so the results are slightly different in these tables and on the top left there we've got the millivolt output measured with the DMM 7510 uh, everything is just slightly low but all within tolerance ending up with an average tolerance of minus 0.003%. And so a good set of values there. On the right hand side we've got the resistance values measured with the 2450 SMU. 
Um, it looks like I use slightly different excitation currents than in the video as well, and that will account for some differences. But again, good set of results, especially on the kilo ohms. Um, they are all within spec, so it's worth noting that if the, the excitation current changes, that can affect the result as well. Um, going down into the bottom there, there's my two temperature transmitters, test results there. Um, and again, everything is within tolerance. Our RTD is very good, 0.09%. Um, that's way better than I would have expected, really, especially with that type of transmitter. And the LKM101, that's the thermocouple transmitter there. And again, everything is pretty good there. It's just that reading at the 4 milliamp level with 0 degrees going in, 1.48%. Uh, that's the worst value across all the tables there, really. But it's still within tolerance specified by the manufacturer, so all seems good at this moment in time. We'll just put up this plot here as well. This is a comparison of the average accuracy of all the calibrators that I've tested. Um, the UT701 there, its average accuracy is better than anything else I've tested up to this point here. And you can see the UT705 is just below that, so that is a combination, seems to make quite a good pair. After that, we've got the MR9270S, um, and of course, that includes a lot more functionality than is offered by the Unity units. Um, but it's very good performance, really, all things considered. And then the other two units, the SG-003A, HG8051, they're okay. Um, not two sets of values, but obviously our SG-003 has quite limited functionality. Um, and then our uh, languishing behind our SG-004A and our LB02, um, quite way behind in comparison to the other units, unfortunately. Um, but still better than 1% uh, tolerance you know, on average. And of course these are all my particular units. There's only single units that I've tested of each of these. So unfortunately somebody else could pick up the units with uh, completely different sets of results. Uh, and opposite to what I found. Uh, but there you go. That's the Unity UT701 there. A uh, fairly good meter. It, it's not the best of highest quality builds but that's what you kind of get with Unity, don't it really? Uh, we've got a two position stand here but the first position is a little bit weak, uh, very easy uh, to flip it down and then you're at a, a lower position which may suit some people working on the bench, whatever your preference is but it's not brilliant, it just sits on those two tabs there in the first position. Um, and then battery wise, uh, PP3 it takes um, and it does work off of rechargeable batteries as well. Mm -hmm lower voltage that they give out this unit doesn't have any problem with that so that's uh, an option should you want to go down that route um, but there you go that's our UT701 uh, at the end of this video thanks very much for watching hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one